The Marvel vs. Capcom series is amongst the most celebrated crossovers in gaming history. X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, and Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes all brought something new to the table. But it would be the next instalment in the series, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, that would be remembered as simply one of the greatest fighting games that has ever been made. With this in mind, today is as good a day as any to revisit this classic and look at why it is so heavily celebrated and fondly remembered. What is it about this one that made it a cut above all of the rest, existing as one of the most popular 2D fighters ever? Let's analyse all of this and more as we unravel the greatness behind this spectacle. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Marvel vs Capcom 2. The ultimate dream game. Yeah. Ah yes, Marvel vs Capcom 2, the new age of heroes. A video game that many consider to be the absolute apex of the Marvel and Capcom collaborations. But how we ended up with a game as refined as this one was partly due to the amazing groundwork that had already been laid out. Capcom produced Marvel fighting games featuring air combat with first surface in the groundbreaking X-Men Children of the Atom before reappearing shortly after in the accurately named Marvel Super Heroes fighting game. We next got the unbelievable X-Men vs Street Fighter which introduced tag team mechanics and placed a Capcom and Marvel roster under one roof before the idea was expanded upon to include more superheroes in Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, then more Capcom characters in Marvel vs Capcom Clash of Super Heroes. By this point it felt like the company had done all they could with this crossover formula, so surely nothing more impressive could be done, right? Well anyone who thought that was clearly incorrect, as Marvel vs Capcom 2 would prove all its doubters wrong. First appearing in the arcade early in 2000, over two years after the previous entries in the series, this two year break from the series was the longest gap between releases, as the first three Capcom vs games would only have months between each one. This meant that Capcom had allowed time for more hype to build around the game, but more importantly, the opportunity to release it as refined as possible. But before we discuss it any deeper, it's time to look at what would have been many players' first ever glimpse of this game, the title's arcade intro sequence. So let's have a peek at what was in place to get gamers hyped up and ready to insert their coins. Capcom presents. Ready? Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes Rather than showing off a ton of fighting like in previous introductions, I guess Capcom must have felt that the brand was now in a strong enough position that rather than instantly showing off gameplay, they would instead tout the insane amount of new gameplay features and mechanics that Marvel vs Capcom 2 brought to the table. This includes revealing a ludicrously large lineup of fighters in this jazzy sequence, so let's begin getting down to the nitty gritty and discussing in depth what can be found within. Reflecting back on what came before this one, there were minor mechanical differences between all the previous games, but the most significant change between each was simply the roster of characters available. The three titles offered less than 20 playable characters each, but had a different lineup depending on the game's theme, so the next game would have to be something bigger and grander than ever before. Now perhaps the obvious move for Capcom to make would be to make Marvel vs Capcom 2 a polygonal fighting game but thankfully the company would instead opt to make an outrageously refined sprite based fighter, which was nice. But unlike with the previous efforts, the backgrounds and visual effects would be rendered in 3D this time, giving a game a distinct look against the title's predecessors. This makes the game the first in the franchise to feature a 2.5D graphical style, and beautiful it is. Before we talk about the deadly amount of mechanical changes and most this epic game received, let's talk about the bloody roster as in my opinion it is one of the most incredible things about this game, if not one of the most incredible things in gaming full stop. The selection of fighters to choose from in this one is amazing. You start the game out with a character selection of 24, but there are a further 32 to unlock, all in all giving you a complete roster of a whopping 56 characters. 
a choice of fighters that was so large it was almost unheard of in other fighting games. Sheer lunacy, but lunacy I certainly appreciated. This game's exciting roster would see a return of most of the characters from the previous Capcom vs games, along with characters who had not been seen in fighting games since the likes of X-Men Children of the Atom and Marvel superheroes such as Psylocke and Iron Man making welcomed returns to the mix for example. But of course, all of this fighter wise was just the tip of the iceberg as the game was packed full of complete newcomers as well. So let's talk about some of these. Firstly on the Marvel side of things we have two new playable characters. These consist of Cable, the son of Cyclops and his first wife Madeline Pryor. Cable was a popular character who was nice to see in the game. In a more off the wall choice but one I appreciate we then have Marrow, a mutant whose bones grow out of her skin which can be removed from her body, providing her with potential knives and clubs as well as body armour. Epic. There are even more new fighters on the Capcom side of things too, so let's run through each of them. First we have Amingo, who has never even appeared in games outside of the Capcom vs series. Essentially Amingo is a sentient cactus man hybrid with a large rotund belly who dresses in Mexican apparel and carries a guitar around with him. Like a Pokemon his only form of speech is repeating his own name over and over again which raises the point, is this bugger a Pokemon? Amingo has an arsenal of very unique attacks at his disposal. This includes a special attack known as the Shout of the Wind which involved Amingo managing to turn himself into a ball in order to hurl himself at opponents. Ridiculous. There has been rumours that he is a rejected Darkstalkers character whereas other sources point to his game being cancelled. Either way he is an oddity who is appreciated. Also about a game of her own we have Ruby Heart, a French speaking pirate captain who earned a prominent reputation sailing the seas. Believe it or not she was created to be one of this title's main protagonists, with her having a major role in the game's crazy story. While there is clearly no reason for this title to really need a story, it has one nonetheless and Ruby's heart is well, at the heart of it. According to the game's plot, this French speaking pirate has a fiery reputation that is well known throughout the seven seas. Like any good pirate, Ruby is said to be a treasure hunter who along with her crew on the flying ship named the Partnier, the group are constantly on the lookout for things of value to add to her collection. She has lots of crazy attacks including the Partnier that involves her summoning her ship then ramming her opponents with it and shooting cannonballs at them. She also has a crazy combo whereby Ruby's crew drop a barrel on top of opponents heads allowing her to throw blades at their trapped bodies. If this attack looks familiar to you, that's because it is, as it is a reference to the popular children's board game known as Pop Up Pirate, which like Marvel vs Capcom 2 itself, is also a Japanese game. As for this strange character who felt like they seemingly came out of nowhere to be included in this now legendary title, according to Capcom's old community manager Seth Killian, he has stated in the past that she was actually an old rejected concept character who was produced to be part of the Darkstalker series, a fact that at a later date Yoshinori Ono of Street Fighter producing fame would also back up. It's inclusions like this which make Marvel vs Capcom 2 feel even more off of the wall than other games. While on the subject of Darkstalkers, Morrigan returns to the Versus franchise but this time Anakara's baby Bonnie Hood and Felicia join her, enhancing Darkstalkers prominence within the Capcom vs series. Mega Man and Roll are back too but this time joined by characters from Mega Man Legends series of all places, which I guess was still relevant around this game's release. So from the Mega Man universe the new additions to the roster include Tron Bon, the anti-hero member of the Bon family of air pirates who had received a Capcom game in her own right titled The Misadventures of Tron Bon previously. Joining her there is also Servbot, one of the many all purpose support robots that Tron Bon built in the Legends series. In terms of more off the war additions, one of the most surprising roster members added was Sun Sun. Sun Sun, although created specifically for Marvel vs Capcom 2, she is at least connected to another Capcom game. This small monkey girl is described to be the daughter of the original Sun Sun, a male character who appeared in the 1984 arcade title of the same name. The 2D side scrolling platformer like Dragon Ball is loosely based on the Chinese novel known as Journey to the West, a quirky character to include in a game and a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. As for new playable characters, finally we have Jill Valentine, whose addition would be no surprise when considering Resident Evil's massive success during the 90s. The anime art style she is depicted in in this game is also massively refreshing and different from her appearances in any games previously, all in all making her one of my favourite additions to Marvel vs Capcom's roster. 
So now we have gotten through talking about all these new fighters, let's begin talking about the development of this vast game. As mentioned in previous videos, all the prior Versus games were programmed to run on Capcom System 2 arcade boards, the same boards which would run the Street Fighter Alpha series in the arcades. Marvel vs Capcom 2, on the other hand, was developed to run on completely different hardware. In fact, this was the first ever fighting game that Capcom would develop themselves that did not utilise the abilities of Capcom's arcade boards. Instead, the game would be created to run on the Sega Naomi arcade board, which used the same electronic components as the Sega Dreamcast. The Naomi had twice as much system memory, twice as much video memory, and four times as much sound memory as its home console counterpart. But all in all, this was the perfect hardware to make a game on, that was intended to be ported over to the powerful Sega home console. The game was first announced on December the 1st, 1999, and on that same day, it was revealed that Japanese home and arcade versions would be compatible via the Dreamcast of EMU. The feature announced would allow players to exchange data between the two versions, earning them experience points which could be used to unlock characters, stages and costumes. It was also announced that day that the game would feature online play between Dreamcast players, which was available through a network known as a matching service. Due to technical limitations, this feature was removed from all international ports of the Dreamcast game though. Thanks to the technical similarities between the Naomi and the Dreamcast, it would only be a matter of months in Japan before the game's arcade version would reach homes in March of 2000. Fortunately, the title would also reach other shores worldwide by the summer of that same year too, meaning the world could enjoy this absolute classic. Now we have covered this game's exciting roster and the hardware this game could be run on, what for the gameplay mechanics that can be found in it? Well, Marvel vs Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes brings back tag team fighting, which is why Teddy Long loves this series over any other gaming franchise. Holla 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 players. Play modes this time around deviate though, offering gamers more choice than ever before. Instead of simply picking two fighters for yourself to face off against other tag teams with, we can now choose three to face off against teams of opponents in 3 on 3 combat, instantly establishing a practical purpose for the game's massive roster of fighters. How awesome. Like in previous games, if a damaged character tags out, they could slowly regenerate health when not in play, instantly adding more strategy to this madness. The Unonis of a variable system would also make a return in this game, however it is more refined this time around. The variable system mechanic first introduced in Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter allowed players to call upon their off-screen teammates to join their currently selected characters to perform a single special move to aid them. All characters also have three assists, varying from projectile moves to healing techniques. The hyper combo gauge also returns, gradually filling as players both deal and receive damage. Once this is full, characters can use this power again to perform hyper combos that deal heavy damage. Using the meter, the player can also perform delay types of combos that execute multiple hyper combos simultaneously and variable combinations, allowing the player to use all three of their characters to perform hyper combos simultaneously. Absolute mayhem. Other mechanical changes include Snapback, which forces opponents to switch between characters. The game's actual controls have been modified too, changing from a title with 6 different attack buttons to 4 attack buttons and 2 assist ones. This move is said to have made the game more accessible to casual players. The game would obviously feature both single and multiplayer modes of play, which you would expect from an arcade fighter from the period. The game's arcade mode obviously and traditionally consists of a player fighting through various encounters until finally reaching the game's end boss. But before reaching such a destination, the player must defeat 7 teams of 3 to be able to take on the game's main villain. The final boss fight takes place against Abyss, who in typical final boss fashion has 3 different forms you must defeat. In this particular instance, the 3 forms also allow for the 3 on 3 playstyle of the game to persist in some way throughout the fight. Abyss is a character created specifically for this game, which happens to be a legendary creature forgotten by time and is believed to be just a fairy tale. Abyss is said to be a forbidden weapon sealed away in an underground temple where it's been told that for centuries it has been in a deep sleep. According to the game's lore, Ruby Hart was the one who accidentally awoke this character, who as a result would transport the Capcom and Marvel fighters via an airship to help stop it. If the game's arcade mode is not enough for you, and you want to hone your skills, the title also offers players a training mode, which allows them to practice moves and combos whilst not in direct competitive combat. 
On top of this, there is also a score attack mode, which is similar to arcade mode, only where the player's primary objective is to get as high a score as possible without the need for a continue. The original arcade game also contains an experience system, giving players an incentive to unlock hidden characters, but the Dreamcast version switches this out for what is known as a secret factor menu. When perusing this menu, players can browse this feature and purchase characters, costumes and stages, using the points they earn throughout their playthrough. This element of the game gives the title a level of single player replayability that's arguably a lot higher than with previous entries in the Capcom vs series, or any of the previous Street Fighter games for that matter too. You can get a sense of progression with Marvel vs Capcom 2, which is different from simply getting as good at it as possible. The quest for unlockables is a great incentive to keep players coming back, wondering what else the game has to offer, and a tempting prospect for completionists who enjoy trying to attain everything within the game. To me, this is the kind of feature that should be in every game, let alone just fighters, as it is an easy incentive and a pat on the back to keep going. But then again, most greedy publishers and developers prefer to just put additional content behind paywalls instead nowadays, so unlockables you attain through skill or resilience are a dying gaming feature as of now. But if you like this sort of thing, Marvel vs Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast gives it to you. Now that we have gone through a rundown of the game and its many features, let's hear what some journalists and critics thought of the game on release. Did they like the game as much as many people do today, or were opinions a little different back then? Let's find out. GameSpot reviewed the game favourably, stating, The over-the-top nature of Marvel vs Capcom 2 makes the other vs games look subdued by comparison. Like its predecessor, it isn't the most balanced game in the world, but that doesn't keep it from being a great deal of fun. Fans of the off-kilter action found in the previous Versus games will surely be pleased with Marvel vs Capcom 2, as it represents the first major set of changes the series has ever seen. IGN would lump a ton of praise on the title too, stating, Capcom sets a new watermark in the Versus series of fighters. All fighting fans must have this game. Marvel vs Capcom 2 proves to be one of the best fighting games out there, one of the Dreamcast's most sparkling gems and an awesome experience. Other publications would carry on piling praise onto the game, with the Daily Radar proclaiming the title to be the most fun 2D fighting game of all time, and Hot Games echoes this sentiment by stating it's the best 2D fighting game ever made. So from ploughing through these game reviews from well over 20 years ago, it seems that a common consensus amongst journalists was that Marvel vs Capcom 2 was one of the greatest 2D fighting games ever made by that point, even if it didn't take itself as seriously as many of the others. Fast forward to 2002 and the Sega Dreamcast was dead. Sega had officially announced that they would be retiring from the hardware industry and future Capcom games would no longer be appearing on Sega systems. It was a damn shame considering that previous versions of their fighting games on those platforms had been the best around for quite some time. This fallout would result in Marvel vs Capcom 2 receiving two ports, one version for the PlayStation 2 and the other for the Microsoft Xbox, both announced at the Electronic Entertainment Expo in 2002. Once again, like the Dreamcast version of the game, online support would remain exclusive to Japan, despite this being two years removed from the game's previous release. GameSpot would once again cover it, stating, The game had been perfectly translated for new consoles, but also commented that the game's graphics and art style was nowhere near as impressive looking as they were two years prior, saying, The contrast between 2D and 3D doesn't work quite as well as you might like, and the resulting clash makes for sharp looking backgrounds and relatively pixelated character sprites, which to be fair to GameSpot is a Fair point, as a strong case could be made that the whole game may have aged even better if it was all in simple 2D, although I must comment I still quite like these graphical effects. Although GameSpot still looked at the game very favourably, they no longer looked at this as one of the greatest 2D fighters ever, and would even go as far as to state that it has been surpassed on nearly every front since its original release. Games like Guilty Gear X have shown freshly animated and impressively sharp 2D sprites, and Capcom's later releases like Capcom vs SNK2 are simply better games in almost every imaginable way. With regards to the 2002 release, they would summarise with, if you're a hardcore fan of Marvel vs Capcom 2, yet somehow missed the Dreamcast version when it was originally released, this game is a port that you will definitely enjoy, but anyone else can find better fighting games on the market. 
Personally, over 20 years removed from this re-release, I couldn't disagree more with GameSpot's take, as Marvel vs Capcom 2 and Capcom vs SNK 2 are too different really to even properly compare. As the Marvel offering is more of a fun chaotic party style game you want to play to have a laugh with friends with, where the latter feels certainly more engineered for gamers whose interests focus more on balance and competition. iGen would give the game praise similar to their review two years earlier, although they were sorely disappointed with the lack of online play with the western releases of the game. This thing was particularly sore when you consider the rise of Xbox Live. They would also criticise the load times compared to what could be found on the Dreamcast. Another interesting point to note is that unlike GameSpot, iGen would state that the game even beats out the later released Capcom vs SNK franchise. I guess illustrating how subjective these reviews actually are and how all of us ultimately need to make our own judgments on many games. The game would resurface again on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in the following generation. The reason for this was mainly because a company known as Backbone Entertainment had developed Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix for the systems in 2008, a game that resulted in many people playing competitively online. After this, many fans would request that they release Marvel vs Capcom 2 on the systems with online play function implemented. As a result, this would become a reality and the game would be built using the original Dreamcast version's code as a base, the previously most refined home version. Apart from online play, this version would utilise various filter options for character sprites offering smooth, crisp and classic looks. Widescreen support was also implemented. These versions of the games would be available to purchase until 2013 when Capcom announced that Marvel vs Capcom 2 would be removed from Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network stores, following the apparent expiration of Capcom's licensing contracts with Marvel Comics. On August 5th, 2022, Arcade 1UP revealed a Marvel vs Capcom 2 arcade cabinet during the 2022 Evolution Championship series. The cabinet includes Wi-Fi connectivity for online multiplayer as well as other games including Marvel vs Capcom Clash of Superheroes, Marvel Superheroes vs Street Fighter, X-Men vs Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes X-Men Children of the Atom, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse and even Marvel Superheroes in War of the Gems. Very nice. Over the years, the game has remained popular and now sits amongst the most iconic fighting games ever. Since the game's release, it has always been played at fighting game tournaments too, but despite this, is it one of the greatest fighters ever? Well, to re-drum a point home I made earlier, this sort of question can only be subjectively answered, even when we put criteria in the way to help us reach such a conclusion. But for the sake of entertainment, here are my personal thoughts on the matter anyway. I certainly think it is absolutely amazing. The roster is massive, the 3 on 3 mechanics were innovative and simplified controls made the game more accessible to players of all skill levels. To top this off, the crazy amount of unlockables give this game tons of replay value for those who enjoy a single player completionist experience. In many ways this fighting game offered more than any fighter previously. Some criticise the game for being unbalanced, but then again the Versus series is not meant to be about balance in the first place, it's about chaos and fun, which this game offers in abundance. It is about different strokes for different folks, but I can see why many people would get more enjoyment out of this game than many others. This title feels huge. Pair all of the elements together that make Marvel vs Capcom 2 so great, then this is why it is the ultimate dream game, in my opinion. No Capcom crossover game has brought this level of insanity since. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, why not check out my video on a bad Capcom crossover game, Capcom Fighting Evolution, and be sure to hit that subscribe button to not miss my future revisit of Marvel vs Capcom 3. Yeah! Cheerio!